This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Lordstown Motors just dodged a big bullet. Foxconn is going to pay $230 million to buy its assembly plant in Ohio. Remember, Lordstown only paid about $20 million for that plant a few years ago. Bloomberg reports Foxconn will also buy $50 million worth of Lordstown stock. Foxconn will assemble Lordstown's endurance pickup with production kicking off next April. And while Foxconn gets control of the plant, Lordstown will keep its assembly lines for hub motors and its battery pack. Foxconn will also build the Fisker pair at the plant starting in the first quarter of 2024. And it could build its open source EV platform as well that it launched earlier in the year. While plenty of people are plenty skeptical about autonomous vehicles, they keep coming closer to reality. GM's Cruise and Google's Waymo unit just received permits from California to charge paying customers. But they won't be transporting passengers by themselves just yet. Cruise's permit allows the company to charge for driverless freight services in parts of San Francisco. The vehicles can operate between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m at a top speed of 30 miles per hour and in light rain and fog. Waymos can operate self-driving vehicles with a safety driver on board in parts of San Francisco and San Mateo counties. Those vehicles can travel up to 65 miles per hour and drive in rain and light fog. The next step will be to get another permit to charge for rides without a safety driver on board. Car sales are tanking in China for Hyundai and Kia and not because of the chip shortage. Very interesting insight from Michael Dunn of Zozo Go. He's one of the foremost experts on the Chinese automotive industry. And he says one reason is rising nationalism. When South Korea bought an anti-missile system from the US, millions of Chinese started boycotting Korean brands. China even restricted tourists from visiting South Korea. And it's not just with cars. Samsung lost most of its cell phone business in China. Michael Dunn says another reason is that China's homegrown car companies are making attractive, good quality cars. So China doesn't need Hyundai or Kia. He quotes another China expert, Jim McGregor, who says, there are two kinds of foreign companies in China. One is the kind that China needs. The other kind needs China. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. One of the hardest parts of vehicle assembly is the paint process. Not only do you have to make sure every nook and cranny is covered, but painting is terrible for the environment, and paint shops require massive investments to help curb their damage. But BMW is launching a new paint process that will help reduce some of that impact. On a limited batch of M4s, it's using a new overspray-free paint machine to apply unique designs on the cars. Instead of using a high-speed rotation to atomize the paint, it relies on a jet application while a special opening allows for a sharp paint edge. The best parts are, you don't even have to mask off the special designs, and multiple colors can be used at the same time. BMW says it's possible to paint every exterior component, making customization limitless. The paint process also costs less to use, doesn't require excess paint particles to be disposed of because it prevents overspray, and needs less energy to operate. The small batch of cars will be used in BMW's own company fleet, but the process will be used in series production next year. Attention interior designers, here's an interesting technology we came across from a startup called Era. They make wireless chargers for devices in cars, but not like the ones that are used in today's cars. Era makes a charger branded Free Power that uses multiple coils instead of the single coil like most current chargers. With today's chargers, you have to place your phone perfectly over the coil or it will charge slowly or not at all. With the free power one, you can just drop your phone on the pad 
or your AirPods or tablet. It can charge multiple devices at once. Better still, it does not have to be a rectangular shape. It can even be circular. And you can use almost any surface in a car, which gives interior designers more flexibility. Free Power's firmware can also be updated, so you can stay up to date as new types of smartphones get introduced. Aeris says one OEM has already signed up for it, though it wouldn't say who, and we'll see them in cars next year. We got to test drive the Ford Maverick this week, and while we can't give you our full driving impressions until the embargo comes off, here's some details that caught our eye. This is not a pretend pickup. It's the real deal. Ford put it through 19 million test miles, and it went through the same test procedures as an F-150. We drove the 2-liter turbo version, towing a 3,600-pound trailer with two ATVs up some big grades and had no trouble keeping up with traffic and got about 16 miles to the gallon. Then we drove the hybrid version with a 1,600-pound trailer and got almost 23 mpg. And then we drove the hybrid with 1,000 pounds of mulch in the back and got 38 miles to the gallon. As any of you who do any towing know, those are some pretty good numbers. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. When Cadillac made the decision to go all electric by 2030, it threw out all its existing parts and components and started from scratch. That's extremely rare in the auto industry. Automakers always try to use as many existing components as they can to cut costs. But the designers of the Cadillac Lyric were given carte blanche, and it really shows in some of the smallest details. For example, the switch gear. Every knob, switch, dial, and button are brand new, and they carry a common design theme with knurled edges and insets. Knurling is that kind of diamond-shaped ridging that you can see here on the sides of the shift knob or on the thumb wheel that's mounted just forward of it. That knurling is used everywhere, including the cup holder rings, steering wheel buttons, and even on the back seat reading lamps. Another example of a carte blanche design is with the speaker grills, which are made of metal. Cadillac brought in GM's best sheet metal people to transform the designer's vision into parts that could be manufactured. While Cadillac justifiably showcases the giant 33-inch display screen in the Lyric, it's these smaller design details that really caught our eye. It shows the kind of time and effort Cadillac is putting in to claw its way back to the top of the luxury segment. Scooters are all the rage right now, and Toyota doesn't want to miss the party. It's launching the Seawalk in Japan, a three-wheeled and electric scooter. The motor is located in the front wheel, which allows speed between 2 to 6 kilometers an hour, or about 1 to 4 miles per hour. There's also a setting for more experienced riders that allows it to go up to 10 kilometers an hour, or just over 6 miles per hour. The Seawalk is powered by a removable 0.27 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, and the estimated range is 14 kilometers, or about 8.5 miles. For a bit of safety, there's sensors on the front to help avoid running into other people or things. The Seawalk will be offered at Toyota's dealers, as well as for rental and leasing. Prices start a little over $3,000. Another Chinese-made vehicle is headed to North America, but this is a little different from the others. GAC Motor is going to start shipping the Trump Chi GS5 SUV to Mexico this week, but they will not be sold under the Trump Chi brand. Instead, they're being rebadged as Dodge Journeys. In case you're wondering, Stellantis is GAC's joint venture partner in China. The volume is kind of small, however. There's only 770 going over in the first shipment, and it expects to export roughly 4,000 by the end of the year. But that's a wrap for this week. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you're able to enjoy your weekend.
Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.